Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms. To understand where we are, let's understand where we came from. This is a piece from my collection. This is a BC-611 or an SR-536 of World War II fame. And this is considered to be the first handheld self-contained two-way radio. You know, five pounds in weight covers a single AM simplex talk path between three and a half and six megahertz, and it's selected by changing crystals and tank coils. 27 milliwatts of transmitter power. This was pretty much state of the art in 1940. Now let's fast forward to the next decade. In the early 1950s, we have another revolutionary evolution in portable radio technology. This is the RT-159 URC-4, and this is, as far as I know, the first dual band handheld radio covering VHF and UHF. At a weight of six pounds with the tethered mercury battery, which is almost the same dimensions as the radio, it covers 121.5 megahertz and 243 megahertz in an AM mode with an output of 35 milliwatts. Now this was intended as a survival radio for a downed airman. Now I could certainly keep going with examples from my reference collection, but I felt those two were the most relevant to physical package contrast to today's radio for study. And today's radio for study is the Baofeng Mini. Now for the price of a couple of Big Mac meal deals, you get a radio capable of VHF and UHF FM operation on both 12.5 and 25 kilohertz splits, AM reception in the VHF civil aviation band, and wide FM reception on the FM broadcast band. Almost a thousand memories and front panel programming at a weight of 7.5 ounces. Outside of its excellent power to form factor ratio and low price, there isn't much remarkable about it. Additional positives are the USB-C charging, uh, the decent audio volume, the good display, and the Bluetooth programming with a phone app is certainly a nice feature. An increase in the font size of channel labels would be a welcome improvement. It is not the smallest portable VHF or UHF ham radio produced. I believe that honor either belongs to the Alenco with the DJ-C1 and the DJ-C4 as monoband portables or the Yesu VX1 as a dual band portable. Unfortunately, I don't have an example of those radios today to show you to compare to our Baofeng Mini, but I do have a Yesu VX3R which is comparable in form factor. I really like the VX3R and I've created quite a bit of content on it in the past and you can find such in my catalog. The VX3R possesses quite a few features that are lacking in the Baofeng Mini, the most notable of which is the broad frequency coverage. However, where the rubber meets the road when we look at the radius from a purely utilitarian standpoint, the Mini clearly eclipses the VX3R in many two-way radio metrics. For example, the power to form factor ratio, the receive audio level, and the battery life are all superior in the Baofeng Mini to the VX3R. This isn't even considering the fact that you can purchase 16 to 20 Baofeng Minis for what you will pay for one VX3R if you sought to procure one on a popular auction site. Now, for comparison purposes, considering that the Mini displays equivalent full-size radio characteristics according to the marketing specifications, the radio I have selected to test the real-world radio performance metrics of the Baofeng Mini against is another vanilla FM VHF UHF dual-band portable radio, in this case the ICOM ICT-70A. This is going to be fun. Now, these are the tests we are going to perform with my test equipment, and the specification data for the Baofeng Mini is limited, which is no surprise. We will be checking the supplied antennas, rated audio, frequency stability, RF power, FM deviation, VHF and UHF sensitivity, spectral purity at VHF, and the relative selectivity of the receiver at VHF. At the end of the testing, I will share the data captured on this form and it will be filled out. I will share highlights from testing on the service monitor and spectrum analyzer, but it will be brief as at the end of the day, it's the data that matters, and I'm not trying to sell you anything. So let's start out with some antenna testing. This is the one for the ICOM will be our control antenna, and this is the FAS270C. 
and this is the small antenna that's provided with the Baofeng Mini and the Baofeng Mini also comes with this hideous contraption here and we'll go ahead and test that antenna as well. So we will start with the ICOM antenna and like most of the factory dual band antennas I have tested for radios from the big three they are narrow banded and perform well at VHF for the two meter band. Now moving to UHF we see the antenna isn't so hot but that's no sweat. Now moving to our helical duck that is provided with the Mini. We see the VHF performance is good looking at match alone, but the exhibited broadband nature is unlike most shortened helical antennas, which is a bit disconcerting. And at the UHF end, we are seeing that the antenna is favoring the lowest portions of the UHF range. Next, we move to the hideous blade antenna provided and see a sweep that is favoring spectrum below the amateur band on VHF. And looking at UHF, it's the same story. Now let's test the radios. First, we are running through transmit service monitor testing with our control radio, the ICOM ICT-70A, on VHF. And in this, we are capturing frequency error, RF power, and FM deviation. Here is our ICOM on UHF. We also cycle both radios through transmit testing on 2.5 kHz as well. Here is our transmit testing for the Baofeng Mini on VHF and UHF, and so far we are almost neck and neck. Next we are moving to receiver testing on our ICOM ICT-70A, and here is VHF, and here is UHF. We are looking at how much signal is required to achieve 12 dB of SUNAD. We are looking at the Baofeng Mini at VHF and at UHF, and so far the ICOM has the advantage in sensitivity, but our Mini is exceeding specifications. Here's an ICOM ICT-70A for comparison. Fundamental 36.44 minus 24.45 minus 23.66 and minus 24.73 well the Baofeng Mini looks like it did really well 36.17 decibel milliwatts is the fundamental and then our first area of concern or second harmonic minus 20.43 then our third is minus 23.59 and then our fourth is minus 23.95 now let's perform a relative selectivity test we have our icom hooked to a signal generator it's generating a signal 20 kilohertz away from the tuned frequency at a level of minus 60 decibel milliwatts so we're going to go ahead and turn our volume up Now let's go ahead and generate our second signal, and you can see we don't hear it at all. Let's go ahead and increase our signal to the device. Minus 55. So negative 54.7 decibel milliwatts, we can hear our signal. Now let's repeat that test with our Baofeng Mini. Turn the volume up. We're gonna generate signal now, minus 60 decibel milliwatts. Signal is on, and you can hear it in the speaker. So now let's see how much we have to reduce our signal to make it disappear. So at negative 66 decibel milliwatts, our signal has disappeared. Now we can review our results. The Baofeng Mini did well in my opinion compared to the ICOM ICT-70A. In rated audio, both radios exceeded specifications and the Baofeng Mini actually delivered more audio across our load than the ICOM, although the larger speaker of the ICOM sounds better in my opinion. In frequency stability, 
Both radios fell below one part per million, which is excellent, with the ICOM displaying better frequency stability over the Baofeng. In RF power, the radios were almost neck and neck, both falling below the 5 watt specification, but that isn't surprising and does not concern me. FM deviation of both radios was within specification on both 25 and 12.5 kHz. In VHF and UHF, receiver sensitivity on both radios exceeded specifications with the ICOM having a more sensitive receiver in my testing. In spectral purity, both radio spurious emissions fell below 10 microwatts, with the ICOM exhibiting an average lower decibels over carrier measurement. The following slide will provide more data. In our relative selectivity test, the ICOM was more selective than the Baofeng by almost 10 dB in rejecting a strong signal 20 kHz from the receiver's tuned frequency. Now in this slide, we will talk about spectral purity briefly. You will note that we have two additional radios in addition to the ones we just tested. One is a Motorola Apex 8000, which represents a top-tier radio, and the other is the Baofeng BFF8HP on medium power, which represents the exact evil opposite. In our slide here, we can see the only reason that the BFF8HP, as tested, fell below the bar is due to the spurious emissions being greater than 25 microwatts by a considerable amount. You see a lot of content tossed around about spectral purity, and it's difficult to measure such with a tiny SA, and certainly so with poor quality attenuators, cabling, and adapters of ambiguous value, in my opinion. Overall, I think the Baofeng Mini is a decent no-frills radio from my limited experience with it, and time will tell. Considering its price point, it could even be considered an expendable item. Now, am I going to rock one as an everyday radio? No. But if one chose to, I'm not going to fault them for it. If you stuck around this long, thank you. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Until next time.